Rasulullah. We're also live on TikTok, so like check the TikTok link. And uh, inshallah, we're going to have live on YouTube as well. We're here in Tijuana, Mexico. Richard, my hermano, is here. Saul is here. Sheikh Karar, the king of El Cajon, is here. Uh, Yusuf is here with me. We've got some other brothers, mashallah, around. We're, gonna, we're here at the masjid. And alhamdulillah, we have brought... How do you open this? How do you, lower one. Uh, lower? Other side. Other side. No, I knew that. I was just testing GMC. Alhamdulillah. So these are all Spanish language books and Quran Spanish translations that we brought across the border. So we're going to be, inshallah, dropping these off here in Tijuana. We have Sheikh Parwez. Salam alaikum wa How are you, Sheikh? How's everything? Alhamdulillah. It is good to see you. Mashallah. Where's Sheikh Abu Bakr? He's, he's coming. He's, he's coming, here. inshallah. So, Sheikh Parvez is here in the Masjid, Masjid al Nur, here in Rosarito. Uh, he's ethnically from India, but he's been in Mexico how long now? Almost uh, 27 years. 27 the years. 20 years. 20 years, Allahu Akbar. May Allah accept it from him, may Allah reward him, may Allah give him istiqama. And uh, alhamdulillah, he's been active in the da'wah here. So, we're going to be bringing. Uh, this and uh, whatever we can from zakat uh, as well to try to help the community inshallah so yalla brothers let's start taking these down mm. Mm. brought a book here alhamdulillah this is a tafsir of the quran upon the methodology of the Salaf of Salih. It's a very summarized tafsir, but uh, very beautiful for the Imam, Sheikh Abu Bakr, because he knows Arabic and things, so he can teach, inshallah, uh, from the tafsir based on the Quran, Hadith, and the Salaf of Salihin, their understanding to the people who don't speak Arabic and things, he can translate between Arabic and English. So inshallah, we brought this as a gift for him. And then Tawheed uh, Hapama, I think it's gonna drop. Yeah. You're bringing big boxes, mashallah. <laughs> so he, wanna come take this real quick? Uh, so this is There's that workout for the day, man. I'll, I'll do one too, man. I want the reward. Man. Oh, yeah, leave the heavy one for me. No problem, I got it. Like Allah, have karamak Allah. Alhamdulillah. Let me get that. Wait, hold on. Ah, uh, this one. Let me show you. So I think with One Message Foundation, we're not just working on ourselves. We want to we wanna develop more people around the world, uh, help the masajid around the world with da'wah. Like we're not, we're not charging them for this. We're doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we get all the musahif together in America, whether it's in English or Spanish, then we give it out to other people who may not have the resources. So we buy them, we give them out free so they can develop the da'wah. Now, alhamdulillah, the da'wah here in Mexico is growing a lot, but they need resources, they need help, they need people of knowledge, they need people to help them grow the da'wah here. And we want to be there for them. Even though people, like even on this trip when I was coming, people were messaging me, you're crazy, you're going to get killed, this or that. We don't fear. Okay, That's what we say. We don't fear anybody but Allah. Fear none but Allah. If you have that, you don't worry about these things. You go, you do your da'wah for the sake of Allah, and the, and the da'wah grows, alhamdulillah. So we're going to do a little walk around, inshallah. Yeah, I can get it up now. Get it up. Uh, yeah. Should I take the mic from so, that one? Because we have more viewers on Okay, there. leave the mic here. Then use, the, no, no, use the other mic. Then. Another mic? So we're going to be live on YouTube and TikTok. So inshallah, you can follow on both. On TikTok, I think the address is sheikhuthman.live, right? Yes. And then on YouTube, it's One Message Foundation, obviously. And then if anybody else wants to share these live on theirs, go for it. We're, 
Not copywriting anything, inshallah. Watch. No murder, no kill. Well, you just said it now. <laughs> You're going to get us banned now. <laughs> Peace and love. We just hug everybody. That's all people do in Mexico. Is we don't want to get banned again. I don't, I don't know how we get banned for just telling the truth of what goes on. But anyway, we're not glorifying it or anything like that. Alhamdulillah. Richard? Yeah. Uh, earlier we were live and they took it down just because we said Tijuana is the, mur uh, the uh, undead people capital of the world. Rashab has issues with walk. Yeah, Wi Fi in the masjid, huh? Yeah. Okay. You want to set up the Wi Fi for the iPad? So when we come back, we'll do that. But we, we got data on these ones, it can come. Mungmachita, hmm. Rashab. For those watching live, we got a real treat because me and my hermano here, we have a lot of history. We're going to talk about it a little bit. And we're going to talk about his history a little bit more than mine because you already know who I am, right? Uh, but this is something that I mean, uh, it still till today amazes me how Allah guides people and how people end up where... Like, poor dogs. <laughs> <coughs> so... Me and Richard go way back because uh, when I was raised in the U.S. or San Diego, uh, as many of you know, was in the not the best neighborhoods and not the best environment. So we got caught up in some gangs uh, ourselves. And subhanAllah, Richard was from my enemy gang. So we were from the east side and east clan or east San Diego. They were from southeast, so southeast kings or southeast clan. And you used to write Listo, right? Uh, Lento. Lento, yeah, Lento. Uh, I used to write Loke or Shooter from Eastside, Loke from AEK. So we were from enemy gangs and there were times, subhanAllah, that yani, us and them got into it and me and him got into it. And a time when he would be carrying a gun looking to kill me personally and of course we were trying to kill them and many people did die in the middle of that. People from our side, people from their side got shot, that got killed, that got stabbed, that got jumped. I know I was jumped by them before and, uh, you know, some of, was it Choke, one of your guys? Me and him got into it once at a, at a rave and, you know, as a score, we kidnapped him one time and I know, yeah. Uh, and of course we had a lot of our guys that got killed, you know, Hench and others that are, but that's such a crazy thing that from a time where we were on enemy sides trying to kill each other, so today that we're brothers in Islam, alhamdulillah, here. So, so tell us about your life a little bit before Islam. I mean, how were you raised? Were you raised around the barrio, cartels, or were you raised in nice white neighborhoods playing uh, soccer? Uh, for being the best of planners, the best of providers, uh, for choosing Islam and the Bible. Um, man, I don't know where to start. So, where were uh, you born at? Uh, born in 1978 in East Los Angeles. Oh, man. A, You're like a migrant mother from Tijuana. You can't hear him? Are you in the mic? You good? Good. Yeah, yeah, speak up maybe a little okay. bit because this. So I uh, um, was born in 1978 in East Los Angeles. Audio a, good? A migrant mother from Tijuana. My mom was born in TJ. Uh, jumped the border in the 70s. And uh, when I was probably like two years old, went back to Tijuana and raised in TJ San Diego. Um, hmm. I know, but he's speaking, so maybe hold it closer and yeah. speak. So we lived in LA prior to, I think it was 1988. Came to San Diego in 89. And uh, the reason why we moved from LA to San Diego is because at a really early age, uh, 
our family was involved in, you know, cartel life. And, uh, hmm? So my mom wanted to get, get away from all that. Let me, let me swipe these out, see, I don't know why they're saying it's not. Uh, chat, let us know if you hear it better. <laughs> So what happens in the TikTok live? Nice. Salam alaikum. Warner, what's up, bro? Mi hermano. <laughs> Salam alaikum from Mexico. So yeah, bro, um, moved to San Diego. Grew up in Logan Heights. Right there, Logan Heights, 30 rest steps. And um, got involved at a really, really, really early age with um, with the, cart with the cartel life, like, you know, everybody else that gets involved, you get involved in human trafficking, drug trafficking, gun trafficking, murder, kidnapping, extortion. And for me and for my family, that was, that was normal, like normal business, you know? So um, my mom got tired of all that. She, you know, decided to be a Christian. And um, me and my mom used to give dawah, but the Christian dawah. I don't know if you remember that one brother at the Four Corners with the picture of Jesus upside yeah, down. Yeah, Muhammad Abdullah. Yeah. My mom and that brother will always go at it. <laughs> that was the first time ever in my life I was um. No K word, no M word. Yeah, I was I was I was introduced to to Islam because my mom will always go out there and debate with that brother. So, um, grew, always grew up in a, in a Catholic, um, born Catholic. How's the audio? Raised Christians through okay. my mom. Um, you know, like I said, me and my mom, we used to go to Logan Heights and give dawah. But even like giving the dawah, you know, like it never made sense, you know about, you know, Jesus being the begotten son of God or being God himself, you know, because, you know, even going to church, you know, you, I listen, you know, so what, what they were preaching wasn't the same as what I was reading in the Bible, especially not the same as the Ten Commandments. So um, pretty much my mom told me, you know, either you accept Jesus or you leave. So at the time, I think I was probably like 13, 14. And that's when I went full on with the gangs, the cartels. Um, started off as a graffiti artist. And right there, it came down to a point where, where you had to click up. You had to click up with a gang and every gang was associated with a cartel. Um, he was in an opposite gang, I was in the opposite gang. So he was from one cartel and I was from the other cartel. And um, so pretty much because I didn't accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I was pretty much my mom kicked me out. So I was just roaming the streets. Um, at a really early age, I started, you know, trafficking, making a lot of money, getting into a lot of trouble. Um, oh, man. I, I get emotional every time I speak about Good man, it's gonna, this is the kind of stuff that people hear, they can change their lives. We got a brother here tonight, we're gonna meet, who was involved in the same stuff, just from watching my video about my life, he became Muslim. Man. So, I mean, there, there's a lot that I wanna say now, but I think we'll probably save it for, <laughs> so once we get to Damascus, so we don't get cut off. But yeah, like I say, I was probably like 14 when I left my house. My mom kicked me out because I didn't wanna follow Jesus, so. I decided to, you know, live on my own. I was homeless in the streets for a while, doing graffiti, gang banging, robbing people, human trafficking, you know. And in, and in that course, you know, like, like you know, like Brother Usman said, we're we're from from rival gangs, you know. Um, <laughs> so. My story with Brother Usman goes way, way back. I don't think I even told him this one. <laughs> you know, um, I didn't know for a long time who he even was. We were Muslim, giving da'wah. 
and I, I didn't even know that he was uh, the same guy that you know we were <laughs> on the opposite ends with. So. I used to live um, right there on 44th and Landis, which was an east side. <laughs> Being from southeast, what were you doing in our hood? Man? I lived in east side because my mom lived in east side, uh, and I was just you know roaming around. <laughs> mainly spent my time my, in southeast. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, my first time that I ran into the brother was um, actually on on 44th and Landis. Um, this one chola lady from Eastside Locals decided to go stab my wife in the back with a pencil. Because at that time we were um, doing a hustle and my wife, she was like my, my secretary. So she comes out, wife gets stabbed in the back. I come back, beat the hell out of the lady, mopped the street with her. And her two sons came. One was from Eastside Locals, the other was from AEK. Same thing, mopped the street with the both of them, you know. And I was signing, you know, days later, whatever, same, you know, because of the problem. I remember uh, one of the homeboys that we used to know back in the day, we used to do business with him. He shows up on this lowrider. And uh, I was signing, I remember this little, because I always, when I was looking for him, I always spoke about him as like that Somali, Mexican looking guy, you know. Mm -hmm. Cause he doesn't really look Somali, not Mexican. I didn't know he was, you no, know, from where he was from. So that same day, the brother gets off the car, talking about wow, 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 what's up, low K K, this and that. And like he said, you know, he always had that 357 with him. And I had my 45. So, and he doesn't even know this. If it wasn't for my mom that stopped me, we actually would have got into a shootout. Yeah. Right there on 44th and Landis. SubhanAllah, can you imagine how Allah writes the Qadr, you know? That day he had a gun, I had a gun. Maybe one of us or both of us. Salaam alaikum, Salaam. How you brothers doing? Like he, he just became Muslim yesterday. Yeah. yeah. He lives over here. What's your name? Moe. Moe. Come here on in the video or what? Yeah. No, hey, hermano, hermano, ven, te están, te están, están viendo aquí. Bienvenido al Islam. Alhamdulillah, we had six shahadas yesterday. So, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, from the brothers that just became Muslim yesterday. No way, huh? ¿Cuántos años tienes? Doce. Alhamdulillah, brothers. Twelve years old. Twelve years old, and he accepted Islam. Mashallah. You know? ¿Cómo se llama usted? Allahu Akbar. Salam alaykum. ¿Cómo se llama? Salam alaykum, hermano. Leonardo, huh? Quanto de años? 14. 14, mashallah. Why do you think you must have a year ago? A year ago? Yeah. Mashallah. All young brothers, mashallah. His mom wants him to be Catholic. So yeah, he's. I don't know. If this is it, then. So, the truth, then. Yeah, Parvis went to their parents' house and then he asked permission from the parents to accept his phone. Um, the parents were okay with him yeah, with him. yeah, they were okay with him. And his little his little brother wants to become Muslim. Mashallah. He's not Muslim yet? No, no, no. Well, tell him, bring him tonight. We can give him the Shahada, inshallah. This is so beautiful, brother. You know, seeing these, these young men, you know, accept Islam, it just reminds me of the Sahaba. You know, like Usa, Musa, you know, he was a boy. You know, when I heard about a lot of the companions, I, I thought they were men, older guys, yeah. in their 30s, 40s. But no, I see, I see these brothers like 14, 12. That's the age of some of the Sahaba when they when they converted to Islam. You know. Sí, de cómo siente todo bien, sí. Él happy. Alhamdulillah. Our brother Parvez once again. So he's the one that gave them the Sahaba. Alhamdulillah. Yesterday. Six people, you said, yeah? Six people accepted Islam Mashallah. yesterday. Here, ven este lado. Esta de este niño. Alhamdulillah, yesterday we have a six people accepted Islam. And the two kids. And we asked the permission from his dad and a mom. And she said, she says, fine, that's why, you know. And uh, that's, that's the thing. Como su papá, mama dijo, está bien, no? Yeah, the, uh, we asked the permission from the parents. So Alhamdulillah, they accepted. They're coming here, you know, Abdul Aziz, Abdul Aziz come here. He, we have a lot of friends that are coming here, praying, you know, all those, they learn. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah.
Where are you from? Salaam Alaikum, Hermano. Salaam Alaikum. How are you? How are you? Good, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. How old are you? 11, mashallah. And you're giving da'wah? Allahu Akbar, 11 year old from Ghana living in Mexico giving da'wah. Allahu Akbar, what's your excuse? <laughs> He's giving a da'wah. Think about it. All his friends. And he's the best soccer player. Soccer. Mashallah. He's playing soccer. And today, Alhamdulillah, he have how many days today? Full. You're fasting full, right? You're Allah fasting Akbar. full on that right now. Think Alhamdulillah. Our job is dependent. That's all we can do. That's all. Yeah, Richard, let's walk yeah. around a little bit. We'll come back for the yeah. masjid then, inshallah. Continue your story, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, but it was like, you know, like I was saying, you know, that it was that, that one day, you know, that my mother stopped me. She said, like, Richie, Richie, no. I was like, Mom, they just stabbed my wife. You know, like, and and I and that was the last time. Alhamdulillah, was the last time I ever saw Brother Usman. Subhanallah. You know, then after that, you know, a lot of things happened in my life. Um, I was always in some kind of a spiritual journey. Uh, okay, I was uh, always on. Uh, always... Music's not from us, all right? People you know, playing in the neighborhood. So. And we don't own the rights to that music either. So, like I say, you know, alhamdulillah, that me and my brother, our paths didn't cross. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a better plan for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. You know? Until today, you know, I love each and every one of you for the sake of Allah. Everybody, all of my brothers and sisters in Islam. But there's a special place for my brother with me, you know. Even when, before my mother passed away, you know, before she even accepted Islam, I told her about my brother. And she told me, mijo, stick with your brother. Because God brought you guys back together. Because he has a greater plan for you and him. I'm sorry, bro, that I, every time I talk about this, even when I'm by myself, when I'm reminded, <laughs> you know, it just fills my heart with so much love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for all of you, for my brothers, for Islam. You know, to me, it still amazes me, you know, that, that, me, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him and his journey, sent me on my journey, and brought us back together at this time. Why? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But whatever it is, it's to benefit the, the ummah, to bring the ummah back together, you know, to, to prove that, that you could be mortal enemies, you know? And, you know, it was through Islam, you know, that now we're brothers, we're together, and we're on the same mission, we're on the same purpose, you know, which is to bring da'wah, to bring Islam to these people right here. There's a lot of people here that are in great need, you know, and, and just having Islam, being a Muslim, it's like finding something that's so beneficial or be so selfish of us to keep it to ourselves and not share it with the community. You know, it, it, it's, an, it's like, it's something that's given to you so you can share and spread, you know? So that's, that's, that's one of the things I'm so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, um, that he brought us back together. E even though before I took my shahada, we had probably two run-ins. The second time was at uh, the master, remember the one that used to be a movie theater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the second time, I think it was like around the second time that I spoke to the brother. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that it was him. You know, and it was because uh, my younger brother had a Muslim friend and he, they were building a, um, a jewelry shop. It was right, right in front of uh, where the master was. So my little brother, his friend was his homeboy, <laughs> you know, and uh, he, yeah. he drove a crown big, black on black. Yeah, I remember that. 
you know, and um, so my brother told me, hey, you know, I know there's one brother and he's a Muslim and his friend used to be from AK. I was like, what? He's like, yeah. I'm like, come on, you want to go help me out? He's like, yeah, yeah, let's go, I'll help you out. We'll do it this side for you. Yeah. So, um, So my little brother tells me, hey, bro, I'm going to go do some work for some Muslim people over there. <laughs> I was like, for real? It's like, let's go, let's go, let's go, I'll go. So I go over there, and um, my little brother's doing his thing. He's working, and I'm doing the electrical. And then um, I was talking to some brothers right there. You know, just, they were giving me da we were talking, and, and I remember this mufti guy is coming this way with the little with the thing suited and booted, you know? <laughs> He comes over, we have a chat, yeah. you know. We didn't agree on many things, you know. That, that's the crazy part though, is that I didn't actually put those two and two together, that you were the same guy from SEK that, I remember one time we got into it, I think Spore was there and somebody else. Uh, I think you were there and somebody got their head cracked from that. And, that yeah. day you had a gun, I had a gun, and I mean, subhanAllah, I mean, that close to being dead. But then like, it was like 15, 20 years later when I ran into you, right? Yeah, 15, 20 years so, later. Then I saw you at the park, and I didn't know that this was the same guy, right? The, the videos are online, you can see, it was during the COVID time, he's masked up, and he comes, and he asks the questions, and we have this good conversation, and then, alhamdulillah, we speak again and ends up, subhanAllah, he becomes Muslim, you know. And that's something amazing, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him through all of that. Now what's crazy is that his pastor, <laughs> you gotta tell that story. <laughs> pastor Pepe. <laughs> yeah, Pepe, what do you call it? Uh, what was his last name? Uh, uh, Gutierrez. Gutierrez, Mr. Pastor Gutierrez. So Richard's not in church anymore. <laughs> so they asked, where's Richard? They're like, oh, he met this guy at a park, this Muslim guy, he becomes Muslim. So this pastor guy, and again, his mom was a very, very practicing Christian at the time. You know, so he's her pastor, the family pastor. He decides he's gonna come to Balboa Park and debate me, you know? And he made all kinds of, you know, he was like, I can tear up any Muslim in a debate. I live in Saudi Arabia and all this crazy stuff, right? So he comes out and the videos are there on the One Message Foundation channel. Richard coming, I think there's three videos of him before the Shahada. Those are online. But then his old pastor coming to debate, those videos are online as well. How's the sound in the chat? Good? Yeah, we got a lot of dogs barking in the background. But yeah, he, he, he was pretty mad. Yeah. I, I remember because I, I was uh, I was in charge. Moderator to mute some people. A moderator mute some people. Yeah, so I, I was actually in charge of distributing the food and doing events for the youth. Yeah, in church, you know, and and all of a sudden I just stopped going. You know, I went over there and. I had a conversation with him. I told him, hey, he's like, how, how come you're not coming? He's like, no, Leo, I'm Muslim now. So we went back at it, back and forth, you know. And um, he even spoke to my mom. Yeah. And he told my mom that, I guess they thought I was like Sufi or something. They say, no, 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 no. Because my mom told me, yeah, you, you go like this and you spin around and you pray to Ali and all these others. Like, no, 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 no. You know, so. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so that, that's what pretty ticked them off. And, and I remember he told me, he said, oh, I go over there and I debate those Muslims all the time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, for real? They go, oh, yeah, I'm going to be there if you want to go over there and show up, you know? Yeah. And yeah, alhamdulillah, you know. He I, showed up, too. He came and the video's online. Uh, he, got, <laughs> he got put in his place, alhamdulillah. You know? yeah. Saw him fall apart very quickly. Yeah, and, my, and my, my mom, she just stopped going to that church. I told him, you know, that pastor is... Allah. He's but no from good. him coming and debating, it not only did Richard stay in Islam, but his family stopped going to that church. His mother stopped going to that church. I have one of the most beautiful things ever was when Richard came to the park one day to give da'wah with us. And this is after the pastor got defeated. Watch that video. Um, 
On the TikTok or on the YouTube? On the I'm YouTube. Assuming. I'm YouTube mic is having some issues. Mm. Let me That's switch TikTok. this. TikTok's fine. TikTok's fine? TikTok's fine. <laughs> so, how's YouTube now? Good? Chat? Post if the sound is good or not. So, his mother was a hardcore Christian her whole life, right? Like he said. The pastor came and debated. And subhanAllah, from his loss and from what he was doing, his family stopped going to that church. His mother got away from the church. He gave da'wah to his mother, subhanAllah, before her death, she accepted Islam. And the day she passed, he was coming to the park to give da'wah. And she told him, Miho, go do your thing, you know. And he came out and he was giving da'wah at the park when she passed away. SubhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her Jannat al firdaus al ala May Allah forgive her as somebody who became Muslim at the end of her life. And, you know, this is the, the biggest success, you know. Alhamdulillah. Then we, after all of this stuff, me and him were here in Tijuana one time to give da'wah. We were sitting right there. And Richard's like, you remember me, right? And I'm like, of course, I met you at the park. He goes, no, 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 from before that. You know, and I was like, I don't know you before that. And he's like, yeah, dude, yeah, I, you did. You know, I was Lento from SEK. And I was like, whoa, it, it blew my mind. You know, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took us from being mortal enemies to being brothers in Islam, how that journey went, where it ended up. And subhanAllah, we're here again in Tijuana, Mexico, as brothers in Islam, giving da'wah, bringing the musahif, helping the community. Inshallah, we're going to go into the masjid and sit. But there's a very important story here. Any one of us could have given up. I could have given up and just given into the lifestyle. And, and where would that end me up today? You know, He could have given up and given into the cartels and the mafia lifestyle. But where would that end today? I can tell you, I have more the fingers, more than the fingers on my hands, I have dead homies. People I grew up with, people that I knew since I was eight years old, people that I considered brothers, that I buried, right? And even after I left the gang world, many of them got killed even after that. People I didn't even know that had gotten killed till recently I heard about it. So where did that mafia gangster life get them? Nothing. People that say, no, I was in too deep, I can't get out. Trust me, we were in deep and we're out and we're Muslim and we're living it. Alhamdulillah. So take that lesson and don't ever despair. I mean, I would have never imagined somebody from SEK, from Southeast Logan, Trenta would be Muslim and my brother, but he is, Alhamdulillah. And a very special brother to me and a very, and he was a special place in my heart, I tell you. So never give up on giving da'wah to somebody either. Don't give up on yourself. If you want to change, this is Ramadan, you can do it. And if there is somebody you want to give da'wah to, don't give up on them and don't think, oh, that guy, he, he could never become Muslim. No, he could, you know. Inshallah. Let's start heading back to the masjid. And... No? I did? Okay. People, I love peace and harmony and hugs and kittens and... <laughs> what happened to freedom of speech? <laughs> China ain't no freedom of speech. <laughs> So, that's the key, you know. So, alhamdulillah, I'm going to let our brother tell us a little bit more about once he became Muslim, uh, how his mother became Muslim, and also how it changed his life, how Allah guided him, and how many people he knows that are caught up in that life and, you know, the, the ills of society there. Without mentioning any M words or K words or anything that they're going to... Both of these, just in case. And they still got mic issues, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, like I said, you know, it's like... Let me go back to the story where I met the brother at the... at the master that used to be a, a movie theater. And, um... When I did that, 
you know, I, I spoke to Imam and, you know, did all the, most of the wiring for, for the place for free, you know. And after that, you know, I took off, left. But the conversation that I had with my brother that day, you know, it just stuck into my heart, you know, all the time, you know. And even though I was part of my mom's church and everything, you know, there was that, that seed that my brother planted in my heart. You know, little by little by little, it just started growing and growing and growing. Yeah. So, um, oh, okay. because we're travelers we'll continue, continue afterwards inshallah still straighten the lines ankles to ankles shoulder to shoulder so those of us that are San Diegans we're going to make two rakah dhuhr and then when we finish dhuhr uh, we'll pray two rakah asr for you Mexicanos. You can just pray your four when we make our tasneem, inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu liman hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allah 
Sami'allahu liman hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Allah send the agents. Asaf? Yes. Inshallah. Iqama? Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayyala al-salat, hayyala al-salat. Aqama al-salat, aqama al-salat. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Allah Akbar. الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله 
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu liman hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Allahumma anta salam, anta salam, tabarakta ya abdal jalali wa ikram. What? 6.30. We'll do what? 6.30 will do what? We must start 6.30. Okay, inshallah. Perfect, inshallah. The rain is there, let me come back for some. No problem, inshallah. Perfect. Are you on the Wi-Fi for this one now? Yes. Okay. I'll have to change. Come on, Romano. We'll finish your story. All the mics on him, so he can. You're all mic'd up. Talk more. Hmm. Nobody wants to hear me, man. I want to hear you. <laughs> This is a rare opportunity. We're in Mexico, uh, in Tijuana, uh, Rosarito, and with our good brothers here. So share the link with others so people can watch live and benefit, inshallah. We're going to have uh, our young brother, Ibrahim. Is his name right? There you go. We're going to ask your questions later, inshallah. So you're going to get all your <laughs> questions at you. But yeah, so tell us after that, when you showed up at Balboa Park and you saw me there, like, did you connect that he was the same person? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because uh, even before that, uh, I was at, at a time I was um, racing Baja, so I had a trophy truck, so I went to this clothing store mm -hmm. in uh, Chula Vista, 
And uh, red clothing? Yeah, newer clothing. Newer clothing, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so right there, I spoke to a brother. Um, same thing, you know, I had a, I had a long beard because I was fasting. Even though I wasn't Muslim, my mom always told me that prayer and fasting is it's a key, you know, to wow. enter paradise. And that's something my grandmother taught me, and she was Catholic, and that's something her, her great-great-grandmothers taught her that, you know, fasting and prayer. And my grandmother, even though she was Catholic, she fasted Mondays and Thursdays. Allah Akbar. So that's something that was... That's the first time I ever heard that. Uh, that's fitra, you know, like how people have it. Her ancestors came from a Muslim country, so I assume it was Medina, because her last name is De Medina, from Medina. Uh, so it was something that was always taught to all of us, you know. SubhanAllah, I've never heard that before, that's yeah. amazing. So they had that fitra in them still from yeah. that natural state, even not being Muslim, fasting Mondays and Thursdays and... Yeah, and before you break your fast, you cook a meal and you always feed your neighbor on the right wow. first. So that's something that was, even though she was Catholic, she had her saints and all that, she had Virgin of Guadalupe, but that was something that her ancestors did before they came to the Americas. Mm. You know, so, um, then you got to Balboa Park. Oh, okay, to the Balboa Park. Um, no, back to the clothing place. Yeah. <laughs> so right there, I, I spoke to a brother, you know. And, you know, same thing, gave me dawa, went, went back and forth and whatnot, you know. And he told me, how do you know so much about Islam? It's like, oh, you know, there's one guy, cholo guy, you know, <laughs> told me this, he's from East Side. He's like, oh, Brother Usman, yeah, I know Brother Usman, we go way back, you know. And I think at that time, I don't know, you were somewhere studying or something, because you weren't in San Diego. So I spoke to the brother, had a long beard. That, that's what caught his attention because I had a long beard. So I was fasting to prepare myself for the Baja 1000. So I went over there looking for um, some oud, um, pacholi, because I had my own ceremony, my own personal relationship with my creator. So I had my own ceremonies that I did for myself on my own, you know. So I spoke to the brother and he told me about, about Brother Usman. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I saw him, I met that guy. You know, went Baja, ran the race. You know, never saw him again. But the fact that when I spoke to the brother, he mentioned Brother Usman again. I was like, wow, you know. I didn't, I didn't connect it, but you know, there was something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, you know, preparing everything. You know, and, and even then, at that time, I was like, oh, hardcore into the cartel. I was actually out there putting in work, you know. And um, came to death, close to death too many times, you know. And um, just being in that lifestyle, you know, it's like I was always wanted to connect with God because I didn't know if I was going to come back home. So I went back home, continued on my life, whatever. Then um, it was on April. I remember it was April in a 420 festival, Earth Festival at Baboa Park. Um, I was walking with my wife and my two daughters. I didn't have my third daughter then. And that's when I met Brother Usman. That, that was before, that was like, I imagine it was like when he barely got started, no, yeah. no cameras, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, were, we went at it back and forth, you know, at that time. You know, I, don't remember. I was not really Muslim, not Christian, not Rastafari. I was a little bit of everything, you know. And so I um, spoke to Brother Usman, you know, and he told me that he was going to go to study somewhere. And, um, you know, went back and forth. We we're talking about the contradictions in the Bible, you know, and how, you know, we agree that it's through minst bad translations, you know, that the Bible has been corrupted. So we, we, we agreed on that. So, oh, you take your shahada? It's like, nah, man, I don't want nothing to do with you Muslims. <laughs> like, I don't want nothing to do with you guys, bro. Like, I'm just out here doing my thing. So the brother gave me a, a CD. At yeah. that time, they were passing out CDs. I think it was like Jesus in Islam or something like that. It gave me a Quran and some other literature. And that was like the only thing that I had, you know. And 
listening to the the material and reading the materials that the brother gave me, you know, the conversation, the dawah that the brother gave me is just like boom, completely opened my mind, you know. You know, we, we agree that there's God, goddesses, demigod, but there's only one creator worthy of worship. You know? So we agreed on that, you know. He went on his way, he went he got you know, to go study and I continue on my life, you know. And, you know, it's like not once, twice, maybe three times, you know, that I spoke to Brother Usman, gave me dawah, and whatever he told me stuck because it made sense, you know, because it's the truth, you know, once you speak the truth, you speak Islam, the truth about Islam, there's like no debating it, you know, it's like obvious. And, you know, went on my life, continued on doing my cartel stuff, you know. And um, the day that I took my shahada, I was there with my grandson, you guys, um, Hamza, mm -hmm. and uh, the big die, you know. <laughs> Hamza gives it that one now. My little Hamza, and um, I saw the brother. I was like, Nah, I'm just gonna. <laughs> wow, I saw him. I want nothing to do with that cholo guy from me. <laughs> nothing to do with them, you know. I don't. And I actually like he went this way, and hey, brother Usman said, Come here, and I said, I was like, What? Talking to me? <laughs> You know, and it, and it was just something that I already had Islam in my heart. You know, I already had the shahada in the tip of my tongue. You know, and like the brother said, hey, why, why are you procrastinating? Why are you, like, dude, you're there. You know, tomorrow it's not promised for anybody. So alhamdulillah, you know, I took my shahada, um, became Muslim. I even changed my name from Richard to Mus'ab. Musab, alhamdulillah, it's beautiful Saba. Um, told my family about it. They're like, you know what? You want nothing to do with your religion. You know, you got Islam. You do your thing. We got our life. We're gonna live our life. Um, the hardest one was my mother. You know, when I told her, "Hey, mom, I'm Muslim." You know, and my name is not Richard anymore. She literally wanted to rip the beard out of my face. You know, like literally wanted to like, <clears throat> you know, made her cry. She kicked me out of her house, came back, you know. And you know, we went back and forth, back and forth, me and my mom, you know, giving her dawa. And, and it was, um, I used a lot what she taught me about Christianity, mm -hmm. you know. She taught me the Ten Commandments, you know, your Lord, your God is one. She taught me, you know, the Jesus prayer, the Lord's prayer, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So I told him, I was like, Mom, you taught me this, mm -hmm. you know. This is what you taught me, you know. And um, she got really angry, bro. She cried, and it was like, for her, it was like the end of the world. Like, that's it. Like, I'm going to hell. <laughs> went back and forth. So what I used to do is, before I went to Dawa, I visited my mother. Mm. Oh, I missed. I missed visiting my mother. So all my beloved brothers in Islam, if your mother's alive today, right now, after this thing is over, call her and tell her that you love her. So I continued giving da'wah to my mom. I used uh, the Arabic, Arabic Bible that I gave to the brother. I used the Quran that uh, one of beautiful sister gave to me. And, and I used the Bible. It's like, mom, you know, look. It's like, no, you, you pray to, to Ali and go like this and you spin around. It's like, nah, nah, mom, trust me. I did that spinning thing twice and it's not for me. Like, trust me, that spinning thing is not for me. So, you know, she thought I was, like, being misguided. You know, it's like, no, Mom, I pray to the same God that Jesus prayed to. You know, that's who I pray to. I don't pray to nobody else but that, you know. And I used a lot of the, of the notes that Brother Usman showed in his videos with his Bible, you know, and I started using them, telling my moms, you know, this is what the Bible says. This is the truth. 
you know, this is the genealogy of Jesus, you know. Jesus, the son of Mary, the supposed of the son of Joseph. You can go all the way down, says Adam, the son of God. So I use that, and I use the Spanish translation mm -hmm. so she can understand. Then I use the Arabic Bible that I gave Brother Uthman to prove. He's like, you see those little scribble scribbles right there? You know, that says Allah, so I highlight it. That says Allah, mm -hmm. you know, so you see this English Quran, you see that little scribble scribble? That means Allah. They go, you see the Arabic Bible, which is the same one as this Bible, which is the same one as that Bible. This one's in English, this one's in Spanish, this one's in Arabic. Do you agree they're all the same? My mom said, yeah, they're all the same, just different languages. Okay, this one says Dios, this one says God, and this one says Allah. So who do I pray to? I don't pray to nobody else but Allah. You know, so little by little, you know, it started making sense, it started making sense, it started making sense, and she started getting more interested, you know. I told her about the story about Brother Usman. I told her, hey, Mom, remember that one guy that I was going to shoot that you stopped me from shooting him over there on 44th and landed? Well, that's him. And that's what really opened her mind. I told her, Mom, you know, God put us back together. This is my brother. He's my brother, and I love him for the sake of Allah. And that's when she started telling me, mijo, you know, you're in a good place. Stay with your brothers. That's your brother. You got brothers, but that's your brother. Stick with him, stay with him. And, you know, we went back and forth several times. Then um, the last time I spoke to her, we, you know, we were talking, going back and forth. And, and I gave her dawah, and I told him, hey, mom, you know what? You know, when you pray, you know, pray, pray to, to the Father who is in heaven, the one Jesus called the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth. You know, pray to him and to him only, just that one time, you know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you revelation, whether through some sign, a dream, or something, you know. And she told me, oh, hey, mijo, she called, called me the next day, and she told me, mijo, I had a dream. And this is the first time I ever talked about it. This, I think I spoke to one brother about this. I don't really like talking about my dreams or my mother's dreams. But for the sake of Dawa, I'm going to do it. So my mom calls me and she tells me, Mijo, I had a dream. It's like, what do you mean you had a dream? It's like, yeah, you know, we talked about yesterday. You know, I prayed to God and I had a dream. It's like, what was the dream, Mom? That she was walking with two books, one on her left, one on her right. And that she was walking. Like, like, what do you mean you were walking? He's like, yeah, I was walking. Walking around the Kaaba in your dreams? He's like, yeah. The red, the black box. I was going around the black box. <laughs> oh. I was like, for real? He's like, yeah. So what happened? He's like, well, I had a left a book and a book in my other hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I was met by somebody, you know, and he took the book out of my hand. He said, well, what happened to the other book? He said, no, I'm still holding it. He said, which book did he take? The one on this hand. I said, okay, that's the book of your sins. So she told me this person or this entity or whatever she saw in the dream walked her around the Kaaba, mm -hmm. walked her into the Kaaba, sat her down. They had a conversation. She wasn't Muslim at this time. She wasn't Muslim at the Allah time. Allah. She wasn't Muslim at the time. Mm -hmm. So she's in there, and I told her, like, all right, Mom, talk to me. This <laughs> Describe to me this person or this thing that you said. Tall, not too tall, not too short. Tell, tell me about his shoulders, about his hands, his hair, his face. And she gave me a beautiful description. It said his face, light came out of his face, a light as beautiful as the moon. So, and I'm talking to her, and she's like, so what are you guys talking about? You know, we were going through my book. We were talking about everything. Your mom, that's your book of your sins. Yeah, but it was empty. Wow. It was empty. There was nothing there. So I looked at her and I started crying and crying and crying. I told her, Mom, your time in this dunya is coming to an end pretty soon. That's my interpretation to your dream, you know. So she told me that once she had that conversation and, you know, 
the book was going away, she left for a book of good deeds. She came out to Kaaba. She said she was going around. She said she was looking for me, but she didn't see me. She said that when she finally was walking, she saw me dressed in white with my brother. So <coughs> that's when I told her, Mom, you got to take your shahada. You got to say, La ilaha illallah. Just say, La ilaha illallah. Don't just that short version of your shahada, you know. You know, and believe in the true message of Jesus, you know. And that's when she took her shahada. Allah And um, she told me, Mijo, I want to go there. She wanted, she wanted to go to Saudi Arabia to the Kaaba. I told her, Mom, let's go. I'll take you. Me and you, I'll take you. Days later, she passed away. You know, and I really wanted her to go for my first Umrah with my brother. So that's how when brother was one called me, said, brother, you want to go to Umrah? I was like, man, I'm so, I was so happy. But at the same time, I was, where's the piece of me missing? You know, so alhamdulillah, brothers, you know, never give up on giving dawah to your loved ones. Never give up giving dawah to your friend, just to a random stranger in the street, you know. Because that would be probably like the only chance that you might have to save somebody's soul, you know, to change their life completely, you know. And so, so yeah, you know, when, when I went to Umrah, it was just like, like I told brothers, like, man, you got no idea how special this is, you know, for me to come here, but there's a piece of me missing, which, which was my mother, you know. But just, you know, the fact that she had that dream and she told me, she said, yeah, I saw you right there dressed in white, with your brothers dressed in white. And there's a picture that we have that we took with me and all my brothers dressed in white. I don't know. You know so, so, yeah, that's how my mom ended up accepting Islam. And nobody else. I'm still the only Muslim in my house, my entire family. You got Hamza. Yeah, he's, he's my little... My little, my little die, my little grandson, yeah. Allah make you a means of guidance for your whole family. But just the fact that your mother became Muslim, this is something huge. How many years from your becoming Muslim to hers? Years, it was days. Oh, from when you no, became Muslim? from when I became Muslim? <clears throat> was it like a year, maybe two years? But you're a revert, keep working on your family. I know our brother Saul. Well, for your family, huh? Couple of years. Couple of years? I think it was like five years or for your dad's family? Parents? Your parents. Huh? I don't know. I don't know. Five years, hey? SubhanAllah. So, that's important, huh? Mujahid, you want to come? Tell your story? Shy. <laughs> <laughs> Shy. <laughs> you just became Muslim, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, brothers, I'm, you know, like I said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners, the best of providers, the best of healers. You know, I wasn't going to go to Umrah. I had barely, I was recovering from a heart attack that I had. So when, when brother Usman told me, hey, brother, you want to go to Umrah with us? I was like, nah, I can't, bro. I just had a heart attack. I got to get um, either open heart surgery or a pacemaker. You know, and, and, and I, you know, I made dua, started praying, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to make it possible me, for me to go. Spoke to my doctor, he said, nope, you <laughs> cannot go because you're going to die on your way over. So I told the brothers, like, nah, bro, I don't think I'll be able to go. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to go, you know, because I, I, I just got a heart attack. I got to get a, either heart, open heart surgery or a pacemaker put on. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, and it wasn't, then I, I was reading it and I read, I read this verse, you know, about, about somebody that dies on their way to Umrah. Mm -hmm. You know, what a beautiful death, brother, you know. What a beautiful death that would be, you know, to, to die, you know, going to Umrah and get the rewards of somebody who does Umrah to the Day of Judgment. So. 
subhanallah, back Umrah, I remember, because Yusuf, Allah reward him, he was organizing it. And Allah reward the brothers from OMF, they, they sponsored a lot of reverse. Our brothers Nikum, Allah reward him, he sponsored one of his brothers as well. And alhamdulillah, you know, there was a lot of reverse in that Umrah. Uh, we met with uh, a lot of brothers out there as well. And Richard wasn't sure, he didn't have his passport ready or something at first. And then I had no money. No money. Lost my house. Health issues. He had lost his house. He was homeless at the time. And we we booked it. And then uh, Richard wasn't on the list. And then Subhanallah, Allah made it that a brother who had paid his everything backed out. And Allah opened the way, and brother Richard got in, and Allah paid for everything for him, and he came and. He, it was a beautiful, beautiful experience in Umrah. What was it like for you to see the Kaaba for the first time? Oh, Mirma. I, I was crying all the way on the plane. You know, I was just praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, um, you know, to at least let me see the Kaaba. You know? Can you just bring the place higher with hand? You sure? Yeah, so I was making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, just let me see the Kaaba, even if I just drop dead right there, you know, just, just I want to see it, you know, it was, it was a beautiful experience, you know, it is, there's not words that I could say, like it was beautiful, I've seen beautiful, exciting, I've seen exciting, I'm happy, I've been happy, there's not like a, a word that I could use to, to describe, you know, the, the, the feeling, the beauty of, of being in the Kaaba, in front of the Kaaba, you know, like man, be, being a guest of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like such a, such a beautiful experience, a gift, you know, from all the brothers that, you know, that donate to OMF, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the best of providers, you know, you know, beautiful experience, you know, being, seeing the Kaaba, but I don't know, once you go, to Medina, it's, it's a lot peaceful, it's a lot slower, yeah. a lot calmer. You know, that's that's a beautiful experience, the Mount, you know, being. I love Mecca and I love Medina, and each one has a very unique and different feel to it. You know, everybody says they love Medina because they go to Medina, but I'll tell you, when I go to Medina, I miss Mecca. <laughs> Because you, know, you think about how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even when he went to Medina, he missed Mecca. And in Mecca, you have a lot of activity, you know, like tawaf and all night you're making ibadah. Even if you go in at 2 a.m. or 4 a.m., it's it's lit up with amal. Like there is action. People are making qiyam and reading Quran. And I mean, tawaf goes on 24/7. Can you imagine, like and the only place you're allowed to go tawaf? Anyway. Allahu Akbar. The only place. No, no Qubur and stuff? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no Karbala, no, 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 Najaf? No, no. <laughs> the only place you're allowed to do Tawaf is in Mecca. In Mecca. But SubhanAllah, many people may not realize, as you're making Tawaf in Mecca, above us, there is Baytul Izzah. And above that, there is Baytul Ma'mur. And there are Malaika making Tawaf Baytul Ma'mur as we are making Tawaf. And, and when you make Tawaf, you start thinking how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created us and created in makhluk and how there's a common theme to it. We're going anti-clockwise. The planets are going anti-clockwise. The universe is, the, the galaxies are going that way. The malaika are making the same tawaf. Above, you see birds flying around, you know, subhanAllah. It's such a beautiful connection. And in Medina, you feel relaxed. You feel this sakina, you feel this calm. You know, you, you go, you make the ziyara, you, you, you pray in Jannah al I mean, you pray in Jannah al uh, uh, Jannah, and then you go see Jannah al Baqi, and uh, if you're lucky, you pay some janais. But I mean, when we were there every salah, there was a janaza, you were getting all that reward. But then you want to come back to Mecca, because Mecca, you, 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 you have that energy of da'wah, you know, you, the energy of ibadah, the energy of tawaf, the energy of. And even the travel between, you start thinking in Mecca, in Medina, and in the middle, you are places where the Quran was revealed. Like, how amazing is that? 
like you were standing where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stood while the Quran was being revealed to him. You know, we went in, uh, in the tr trip we went, and Allah reward Yusuf for organizing and all the hardship he did for that, and for his hand that's breaking right now holding the camera. Um, you know, we went to the places like uh, Uhud, and we went to uh, yani Arafah and, and Muzdalifa, and we went, and uh, we had a bus and everything, and we, everywhere we went, and we had a little talk, we remembered the ayat that were revealed, we talked about the Asbab al-Nuzul, so it's very important when you go for Hajj and Umrah and things also, don't think you're on vacation, like don't think I just, what's the hotel, like even though we had very good hotels, but, um, you know, don't worry about those things. Worry about the ibadah that you're doing, the amazing places that you're seeing. Imagine you're standing where Ibrahim alayhi salam stood. You're standing where Ismail alayhi salam stood. You're standing where you're praying with, in some of the masajid where so many anbiya had prayed. We're standing where Rasulullah Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi salatu salam, he stood and watched and Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum, that this is where they were. Like, that's something amazing. And that was an amazing trip. We had uh, good good times, alhamdulillah. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful experience. Uh, especially when, what is that, Then in the morning when we go see the the, the grave of Rasulullah? Well, we went to Ziyara. So okay. what we did is we went early, uh, meaning before Fajr, mm -hmm. and we did the Ziyara. We saw the grave uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with Abu Bakr and Umar radiyan and buried. And then we went to Rawat uh, Jannah, and this is where we stayed there, alhamdulillah, at a time where they gave the Adhan, we got to sit there, pay Qiyam al-Layl, pay our Witr, then hear the Adhan, and then and the first Adhan, which is a, you're still in the time of Qiyam al-Layl and pray, and then we were there for the Fajr Adhan, alhamdulillah, and then we prayed our Fajr Fard Salah there, until Ishraq we were there, alhamdulillah, amazing. It's a be beautiful place. I, I, I had no idea where I was at. No, I was just, wow, like just amazed. And the brother, brother told me, um, he's like, hey, bro, he's like, do you, do you know where you're at? He's like, no, I don't know where I'm at. It's like, wow, it's nice, the buildings, wow. It's like, dude, you're, 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 in the, you're in paradise. We can use that one for this one. Yeah, so uh, we went in, like, you know, did our prayers and everything, and I'm just, I had no clue where I was at. And the brother tells me, you know where you're at? You're in paradise. Like, what? Like, what do you mean I'm in paradise? He said, ah, you're in paradise. Then little by little, it just started, it's like, hey, so, like, like, what do you mean we're in paradise? He's like, yeah. Like, I didn't even know that the grave of our beloved prophet was on my left-hand side. I didn't know that was where he stood and gave it. Like, I had no idea. I was just... Wow, mates, you know. So when we passed to give our salams you know, to the Prophet and, and his companions, I froze. Mm. Like, I just froze. I was just touching my heart, like, oh my God, I'm going to die right here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to die right here in front of my Prophet. You know? And I started crying and crying. Even the brothers up there, the security guards, like, Haji, <laughs> and the other brother, I don't know what they were talking about, but brother told me that he, they were kicking me out because I was making dua. Like, no, I'm not making dua, bro. I'm, I'm trying not to, like, to pass time. out. I'm trying not to pass out. The other words, then they try to keep the flow going, but yeah. Yeah, you're in that very yeah. emotional state at that time. Yeah, I was so. just crying and crying and crying and were gonna kick me out, but I don't know what the brother told them, and they say it's, it's, it's okay. It just pretty much let me do my thing, you know. But we'll Allah, Alhamdulillah, with Islam, like after we finish this ibadah, we ask Allah to take our soul. Yeah. Like we sure, we sure is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgive us, and He gonna give us the jannah because He's the the haq. This is something the Christians have come up with this new thing, where they think like we don't know we're going to jannah. Yeah. You know, I told them, look, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that the haq of Allah on the ibad is that we worship none but Allah. And if we do that, then the haq of ibad on Allah is that Allah will not punish us. He will enter us into Jannah. Yeah. So as a Muslim, when you're on Tawheed, when you're not doing shirk, you're not worshipping Jesus or Ali or Qubur or Abdul Qadir Jilani, you're not worshipping except Rabbul Alameen, you're not making dua except to Allah, then it is the haq that we have on Allah that Allah will enter us because Allah <coughs> is so merciful. We have no doubt to this. You know, it's just, uh, 
we, just because we don't follow, you know, weird, you know, oh, I'm going to continue sinning and Jesus is going to pay for my sin. Yeah. Just because we don't do that scapegoating doesn't mean that we don't know that Allah has made Jannah for the people of Tawheed, for the people of Iman, alhamdulillah. Right now we were at uh, Baboa Park, me and Karar, and uh, two Iraqi Christian women, they came and debated. The video just got posted, right? Yeah. The things have been posted already. And they were saying, the word hub is never mentioned in the Quran. <laughs> 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 I told him, Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. Yeah. See, the Muslims, we know the Quran by heart. So I didn't have to, even, like, from memory, I was like, there's a ayah right there. And they were like, no, no, there's no way. They had no answer. Yeah. How many times Allah says He loves the people of Sabr, the people Sabirin and Muhsineen and Mustaqeen? Yeah. I, I don't even know where they get this stuff from. Like, if you're going to come pick some kind of fault, How'd you learn about Islam, man? Chat, let us know if the audio is alright. Yeah. Sorry for my, uh, I don't know the terms. Or the don't worry about it, man. You're, you're good. Well, basically, um, I mean, I grew up in San Diego. I grew up in a Catholic household, Christian Catholic. Uh, my mother, my sister, my father, they were just Christian by culture. You know? mm. when it, we went to church so once in a while on Sunday. Dina Wala, the student machine. I like. But in my, my thinking, my thought, that three in one trinity never makes sense, you know. Mm. And I always went through the Bible that says the Son and then the Father and the Holy Spirit. So to me, that's not, that didn't make sense. And then Jesus and Jesus at the time said, Father, you know. So yeah. my mind was just confused. So, so throughout my, I got you. Go ahead. So throughout my whole life, I was pretty much just believing in God, but not believing in religion. You know? mm. Well, when I was a teenager, San Diego got up in the gangs, you know. Where, where, if you don't mind, where, which side of San Diego were you? I, I, was, I was an east side. He was southeast Logan. I was a east sider. Encanto. Encanto, all right. Yeah, yeah I know the Encanto boys. Yeah. So I grew up in that environment. Uh, Sorry, so I'm going to put. I don't know why this one is, seems like it's low, but go ahead. Yeah. So, long, long story short, I mean, uh, I got into some trouble. Uh, I've always been illegal in, in, in the United States. I got deported. Uh, I've been here for about 12 years. The first, I'll say eight, how maybe like you in San Diego? 24 years wow. how old since I was two years old. Wow. So I'm originally from Acapulco, Mexico. That's crazy because then like you don't know anything but San Diego, right? Exactly. So I didn't know anything. I never thought I was going to get deported. So yeah. I was just running amok, right? Um, so the reality struck. I came to Tijuana was all by myself, no family, so I kind of went wild, you know. How did you survive? That's crazy, right? Well, I mean, I got a job and I did some other yeah, illegal yeah. stuff, don't right? Don't but, yourself, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I had a job. I constantly had a job at the same time. I was doing, if I could say, I guess drugs, I could say, you know. But I don't want to go that yeah, deep, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm the brother, Octavio, for a whole year. He was telling me, hey, come on, let's go, let's go to the masjid. Let's go to the mosque. <laughs> By the time I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about going. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> you, you, become, you become accustomed to it. Only Mujahid gets a pass, man. <laughs> I'm camera shy, too, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm camera shy, three, man. I'm on YouTube all over the place. So um, the brother was always telling me, hey, come on, let's go. But in my mind, I was just got like, no, not right now. Go ahead. In my mind, I was like, no, you know what? It's not for me. I'm not ready. Mm. Until one day, uh, for some reason, I got a feeling that 
I needed to change, you know. I needed to change, and, and at the time, I was kind of atheist, I guess. Mm. I didn't really believe in anything. Uh, you still believed in God, like there is a God? There is. Agnostic, or were you like, no, nah, there's no God? I was believing in God, yes, right, but so it just didn't work. Agnostic, yeah. yeah. I was looking into uh, the Masons yeah. and to all this other stuff that was looking, going around. I was looking for something, you know. Um, until one day I just got tired of what I was doing. I said, hey, God, if you're really out there, please guide me. Mm. Uh, and alhamdulillah, the next day the brother told me, hey, let's go to the masjid. To me, I took that as a sign, you know. If I didn't take it, then I would be in a, a dumb mistake, you know. So I started going. Uh, the first day he took me, I took my shahada. Because in my mind, I knew that was going to be my destiny. You know, that's the road I have to take. And ever since then, 2016, I've been a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Allah. And I'm sorry for next time. I'm just not a good storyteller like you, no, you know. It's a beautiful story, man. You know, um, there is no, you know like, like when we talk about our experiences, it, it, it's not about, you know, what all you went through or didn't. You relate to somebody out there. Like I, myself, for many, many years, maybe 10, 15 years, I didn't tell anybody my story or my past. Even my son is here. Like at home, I didn't talk about it for many years. You know? And I kind of like bottled it in because, you know, like I didn't want to remember all the stuff that had happened and things. And Allah reward our brother Saj uh, you know, he, he was one of the first ones that told me, you know, you got to tell your story because you never know somebody else might be going through the same thing. Right. And when they hear it, it just, in their mind, it connects with them. And I've had people that connected with me from southern Mexico, that were cartel guys, that said, you know what, we watched your video, didn't know any Muslims. They came Muslim from seeing your video, you know. So you never know, somebody's going through the same stuff that you're going through when you talk about, I mean, how Islam helped you. And, you know, if you didn't become Muslim, you know, I'm not going to use the M word, because I don't want our screen to get blocked, but, you know, 2,800 people last year uh, are no longer amongst the living in this city right here. You know, and those were all people c caught up in the same stuff you were caught up in. Right. So if Islam didn't come to you, you would be another one of those statistics. No longer walking on earth, you'd be underneath this ground, right? Correct. But Allah blessed you. And brother, Allah reward our brother Tobio and also our brother Parvez and brother Mujahid and all the brothers here in Tijuana that are, that are in Rosarito and, and in all Mexico that are putting that work in that, that are becoming that means of Hidayah. Definitely, yes. So when the brother came to you and he spoke to you about Islam and then you took your shahada, how did your life change? Uh, like with the D words and all that? Oh, I'm like, I, I mean, it wasn't instantly like because I still did my studying. I still did my, uh, my research on what I had to act, how to, to conduct myself, right? It took me about maybe a month after the research. And alhamdulillah, I just I didn't feel the urge to, to look for other type of friends, relationships, right? Okay. Or, or do any illicit activities. Uh, so I'm not saying that I'm a, I was a perfect Muslim. There was a struggle, you know. There was I fell down. I always come back, but I always have that in my mind, you know, that um, the last one tall is is the truth, mm -hmm. and I do need to improve myself every day, you know. You know, there's no such thing as a perfect human being. Even the prophets, they go through temptations. You know, mm -hmm. even if you look at Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. Even according to Christians, he was tempted by the devil. You know. He, he became angry at the fig tree and so on and so on. So perfection is only for Allah. Right. And that's why we say subhanallah. People may not realize, a lot of Muslims may not realize, what does the word subhanallah mean? Subhanallah means that Allah is free from all imperfection. There's nothing wrong, nothing bad, nothing evil, nothing incomplete. Allah doesn't get tired, He doesn't rest, He doesn't get overwhelmed with anger where He can't control it. Even if Allah... He has, he loves, he, he, he hates, he angers, but his anger is in a perfect state. His love is a perfect state. His, even when he punishes, he punishes with justice. You know, this is the beautiful thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is perfect. Everybody other than Allah is not perfect. You know, Jesus, Muhammad, Abraham, Musa, alayhim salatu wasalam, we love them. They were the best of mankind. They were the prophets of Allah. They were protected from sin, all of them. But... Only Allah is perfect. That's why when Christians say that God got tired and had to sleep, we like laugh at it. Like, what do you mean he got tired? You know, like, <laughs> you know, he's like, I put my week in, I gotta go get some right. sleep now. I, I can't think. I mean, <laughs> like, no, Allah doesn't rest. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't need to. You know, his anger never overtakes him. You know, meaning that, you know, when we get angry, our anger is such that we don't make decisions correctly anymore. Allah is always just with his decisions. So, 
perfection is not the goal, but the goal for us is to turn to Allah, as you have. Right. And the Prophet ﷺ, he told us a beautiful hadith that all of the children of Adam, they make mistakes, they sin. All the children of Adam, they're going to make either a judgment mistake, like even if you look at uh, Adam salam, he made a judgment error. Not that he was intending to sin, but he made a judgment error. He shouldn't have eaten from the tree, ate from the tree. Musa salam, two people were fighting. He went to go break it up. He was trying to do something good, but he ended up killing a man. And mm-hmm. It's an error, right? Yunus salam, he left his people when he shouldn't have, right? But Allah loves those who repent. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said the best of sinners are those who make tawbah. When you turn back to Allah, Allah loves it. No? There's a beautiful, beautiful hadith that a lot of people don't understand. A hadith talks about a man who's in a desert. Think about this, right? In a desert, he has a camel with his provisions. So his water, his food, his everything's on that camel. Everything he needs. And a desert's not like, you know, it's not like the desert here on the 8th freeway, you know, where like, all right, mm. if you get lost, you can go to the next 7-Eleven or the phone. Not. Right. In those deserts, you get lost, you die. There's no water, there's no watering mm. hole, there's no food, there's no town. So he's there. The only means of surviving through that desert is that camel. And a storm comes or whatever happens, and he loses the camel. Now, he's, he's in a desert, there's not a person around him, he's going around, he's going around, he's looking for that camel, he's looking for some water, he's looking for people, he finds nothing. Until he gets so tired, he just sits down, thinking he's going to die. He is given in to the fact that he's going to die. And as he puts his head down, he looks up and he sees his camel and his provisions. And he becomes so overjoyed, he becomes so happy, that out of happiness, he wants to praise Allah, but he makes a mistake. He says, oh Allah, you are my slave, I am your Lord. Like He becomes so, his tongue even slips. That's how happy he is. And at that moment, imagine his happiness. He says, Allah is happier than that when a slave turns back to him. Imagine when you and you and me and you and others that were lost, when you turn back to Allah, and if you're watching, and you are lost in some kind of sins, if you make tawbah, Allah will be happier than that, than that person is when he finds his provision. That's how happy Allah is when he makes a tawbah. How beautiful is Islam? You know? Even if you sin to the size of the, the foam on the ocean. You, know, you, you go out right here, we got the Pacific Ocean. You know, when you get it, it's real foamy and you see across that white foam that goes across the entire ocean. The entire view that you see, you see that foam on the, on the beach side. Even if your sins are that much, Allah will bring more mercy than that and forgive it. Without having to kill his son, without having to go and massacre an innocent person or some nonsense. No, Allah is so merciful. From his mercy, from his love, he can forgive all your sins. This right. is the greatness of Allah. And that's the beauty of tawbah. Right. And that's why Islam, I'm sorry to yeah? I mean, that's why Islam makes sense to me, you know, because... The, the concept of Jesus died for your sins and pretty much you could do anything you want, right? Uh, yeah. Or it didn't give me any structure, you know? Yeah, I or it didn't give me any rectification. <laughs> so I used, to, I used to, I mean, as Richard and me go from way back, I mean, we used to gangbang in San Diego and, and we used to, Saturday night was the night we'd do all our dirt. Sunday morning we were in church in suits with our abuelas and tias and you know, we'd be confessing, and I, I still remember it. You know, I was, I was 15, 16 at the time. I would go in, and you know, I'd be like, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. You know, he's like, what'd you do this time? You know, and you're like, yeah, I stabbed a guy last night, you know, and robbed him. And, you know, we used to come out to TJ, and uh, I don't want to get banned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we used to come to TJ and liberate Marines from the money that they would bring down here. Uh, you know, and then you just say all that, and then the priest would be like, well, you know, say these many Hail Marys, and... Donate to the church, and you're good, you know? And then, mm-hmm. yeah, he'd be like, stop. And you're like, bro, I can't stop. This is what I do. And he's like, well, see you next week. <laughs> so, like, it didn't really motivate you to change, you know? Right. But when I came to Islam, and I said, no, no, Allah is going to take account. You know I mean? Allah forgives, but you can't just continuously sin and not, not you know, turn to Allah. And that's a beautiful thing. If you sin, and you make tawbah, and sincerely you repent, and then you fall again, you just go back to Allah. Allah is so forgiving, He still forgives you. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when you sin and you go back to Allah, Allah forgives you. If people were no longer doing that, there was nobody, Allah would make another creation that they would sin and make tawbah because that's how much Allah loves to forgive. 
How beautiful is that? How's your Spanish? Uh, it's official. Mm. Uh, but before you translate, let, let's get a little yeah. bit of your story, inshallah. I mean, then you speak Spanish. He volunteered you. Octavio, eh? Safe. Safe? MashaAllah, yeah. safe. I hope you've never worked for the FBI, but if you have, that's what it feels like. No, I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> 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 a joke. joke. So how, how did you come to Islam? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Well, I'm just going to wrap it up really short. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a long story. Yeah, yeah. Where's the fun in the short? <laughs> we got time. We're all, if thought isn't for a while. Well, well you know, I, I, I came from a, a broken down family. Uh, I grew up at this place called South Central LA. Yeah, yeah. South Los? Yes, yeah, so like uh, sometimes I tell people I, I came from like a third, uh, third generation of criminals. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, my mom's so dope and all that. So, and pe so we, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I remember asking my mom one day, Mom, I want a hamburger. She was like, Here, sell this nigga one. <laughs> so that's the kind of environment I grew up in, right? So after a minute, after a lot of years, uh, it was just a big war zone in South Central. So I told my mom, Mom, because I met this girl at Bakersfield. So I was like, Mom, let's sell the house and let's go to Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. So we went to Bakersfield and she sold her house. We went to Bakersfield and I just so happened to got a job at, at this oil fields. So for me, it was like real, doing real good. They got oil fields in Bakersfield? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so as I'm working in the oil fields, one day my cousin was like, uh, works with the bad guys. He came with a bag full of money. I was like, oh. now I, I was making good money. I was already making like eight, nine hundred dollars a week. And I was like, dude, but I was busting a lot of hours. And I was like, dude, I don't want to work no more. How do you do this? Oh, you don't want to know. No, I do. <laughs> How are you going to bring a bag of money and tell me you don't want to know? <laughs> He'll say, well, if you want to know, if you have to go with me. And I was like, tell me anything. I'll do it, dude. So we went up to the mountains there, guys. Now, <laughs> we came back, and I made 30 grand. So I was like, you know what? I think I could do this here in Bakersfield because there's a lot of fields here. And I already know how to do it. For now, it's cannabis It's legal now. Yeah. Well, before it wasn't legal. Right. So... So they got me at this big plantation, right? And I got raided, I lost it, and I was like, oh, broken down in my heart. Uh, I got built out, and I just, God, I don't want to do bad no more. You know, I got pushed into this life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, right. so I never wanted to do bad anyway. So I, God listened, so I was, one day I was, and the whole, it was a community there, they already know me, because I, I guess I used to terrorize all of them, <laughs> right? And, and I was thinking, like, I was like Omar, remember Omar? Mm -hmm. So all the Yemeni community, I used to terrorize everybody. And one day I went into the store, and this Yemen guy was like, hey, uh, he called me by the nickname they used to call me. He was like, hey, do you want to go to Jenna? And I was like, what's that? What, what do they call you? Uh, <laughs> character. Character? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, so, uh, what do they call like, you? Me? Yeah. Lento. Lento, that's it? Yeah. Nothing else? What about you? Charger. Charger? <laughs> oh, God. Did you play football? Yeah, he's got a Charger tattoo. So this guy was like, you want to go to Jenna? I was like, what's that? He was like, it's paradise. I was like, well, what are you doing? I was like, man, you know me, dude. I'm a bad guy. You know, he was like, no, no, come here, come here, come here. Repeat. Oh, it was a Sikh guy right there, the cashier, Muslim guy. <laughs> so he was like, well, just give me your hand. Repeat after me. I he didn't explain that. anything else to you? No, 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 I just said what he told me, right? He was like, let's go to the masjid now. I need mm. to show you how to do budu. Mm. So I went to the masjid, show me how to do budu, and show me how to pray. For I remember for a whole month, I ate for free. <laughs> Everybody, uh, everywhere that I went. A lot of work the people of Yemen, mashallah. He was like, a lot of hospitality. They, they had a lot of restaurants. I was like, oh, he's safe. Uh, he's, he's a Muslim now. And all the community were like, what? You know, they were like, <laughs> shocked, right? First... I was a Muslim, so a whole bunch of guys started going to the masjid because us were going to the masjid. So a whole bunch of youngsters, they were like really admire me, right? That I accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. And uh, I still got in trouble and shipped back over here. 
and I've been Muslim forever since. So Alhamdulillah. How is the da'wah in Mexico? Oh, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, uh, I'm busy now. I'm working. But yeah, uh, Omar's doing a good job. Uh, Abu Ali, he's doing a good job too. Ali. Well, I mean, yeah. I like that. Man. I, I remember one day I was working at this call center and I was giving dawah to people, converting people to Islam. They were like, he came to me like, safe. If one more converts to Islam, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you're fired. Because I, I, I remember I used to go to the corner and do my salats. Yeah. And people were like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm a Muslim. I have to pray. Mm. He was like, oh, yeah. And they started talking about Islam. So I started talking about Islam and took him to the masjid and converted right. to Islam. And, but yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's been a, in Spanish, he's been a good elemento. <laughs> he's been a good yeah. elemento. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but that's my short story. Alhamdulillah, beautiful, inshallah. Inshallah, Brother Parvez, tell us a little bit about the da'wah here yourself, inshallah. Throw some mics on you, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we have quite a long time now. Here, let me get you on a few more, just for fun. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise belong to one God الحمد لله By the grace of Allah so Allah, we are here today get, gathering here 20 minutes more to break the fast The story is very nice الحمد لله been here a long time almost more than 20 years now and Islam is growing in Mexico and our job is just keep, keep giving the message make message of truth you know the Islam, the way the prophets, all the prophets of God, they bring the message. And same thing we are doing it. That's, that's the reason we are here today. Prophet Man is here, the people are around here, the sun, everybody here. Only give the message, give the message of peace. You know, they're the message of peace, that's why I call, you know, our job, keep giving the message. The, the way that all the prophets of God, they give the message. From Adam al salam to the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. There's the reason brother, the brother is here today, he gives his story, you know. Other brother, Abu Ali, charger, he's, he's a charger, <laughs> alhamdulillah, but no more charger. Look how the things change. Before, charger, gangsters. Now, change his name, Abu Ali. Look how he look now, everything different. He nice, working, job, fasting, he stay away from the, all the bad environment. Things change. He, he, he didn't change himself. Allah is the one changing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, whoever guide, no one can misguide. And whoever misguide, you know, Allah cannot not God guide them. So our job is keep giving the message, stay tuned, all together, and that's all we can do. Mexico is a great country. People are nice here. Our job, keep giving the message to them. And people will come to Islam, they will come. They will come. Good people. People are good. Good hearted. Everything good. All you need to give the message, give the message, give the message. Anyone else? Alhamdulillah. How do you guys take the challenge here? Alhamdulillah, the neighbors are good. People are good. We don't have any problems at all. All the people around here, they love us. You know, whatever we need, they support us. They never, they never did anything wrong to us in 20 years. All the children around here, they grew up now. The people around, around the mosque, they never did anything wrong to us. Nothing. Good. 100%. Good people. We don't have any complaints against no one around the Rosarito. Rosarito is the best place. Come and visit. No, the peoples. Good peoples. Good peoples. We don't have any problem. We don't have any conflict about the religion. They never did nothing wrong to us. They always support us. All the time they support us. We need anything, we call them. We need support, they support us. Mm -hmm. Yes, good people, very good people. Just need to give them a message. That's all we need. What's the strategy you guys give them a message? How you approach them? How you give da'wah to them? Yeah, we message? now been here a long, long time. We give da'wah to them, we talk to them. Yesterday, become, you know, six people become a Muslim yesterday, accepted Islam yesterday. They see us, they see us how we live, how we act, how we talk, how we eat, how we walk. They see us. 
you know, and they feel secure here. They don't feel any fear, you know, the Muslims around here, you know, fear us. No. We, we, we have the children here. Yes, yes, they know. And uh, you ask them information. How long you, cuánto tiempo conoces a ti aquí? Naciste aquí, no? Creciste aquí, you know? Uh, ¿Cómo sientes con otros? ¿Sientes peligros? See? Ask the children. That's what I'm saying. Anyone want to know about us, come. Come direct to us. Go ask the neighbors how we live, how we eat, how we talk. And they will let you know. They will talk to you right away. They will tell you the information. You don't have to go around, you know, around there hiding. Just come everything straight. Straight forward. Come. We are ready to talk. We are ready to sit. You know, don't go around. Just come direct. You will, you will have all the information. You guys make this start over there? Or yeah, over there. Uh, let's move there. Okay. We're going to do your questions there. Okay. Questions from the chat? Uh, from him and the chat. Okay. So. I'm going to do the... I'm going to do the eyes on. I want, I, want, I want you next to me. Okay. What time is it? It's on 17. What time is it now? Any time. Any time. 20 minutes. Take your shot. Take it next to me, then I put my side. Okay, inshallah. <laughs> Mashallah, good, good, excellent. Yeah. Put, put it live. Yeah, put it live. Like he has a TikTok live. So, so how yes, can you put it live, Azan? Uh, I want you next to me. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put your TikTok on. I think, okay. they, I don't know how to do TikTok, but the brothers can show you, inshallah. Okay. I look like Ice Cube, yeah. but the better looking version of him. Yeah, I guess. Alaikum as salam 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 So this one is no mic right now? It's okay. So we'll just get, get up close to where you're at. Yeah, bring your You don't need a mic. We also have only a Wi Fi. Okay, perfect. Huh? A little bit like free mix. Okay, we'll, we'll go over here first. Let's walk around, ask your questions, inshallah. Uh, where, are my, oh, where are my shoes at? 17. Where are my shoes? Ah. TikTok is good. I don't have TikTok. They just made it for the brothers, just made it for us right now, too. Uh, I think you have, no? Uh, I don't, but they made some for us, alhamdulillah. Personally, I don't have anything, but right now we just made one uh, recently. Okay. There is uh, there are other channels that fans and stuff have made. They put the videos and stuff. They do really well, okay. alhamdulillah. But right now we just the first time we're doing a like live today. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, but if you want to know how to do, make it live, uh, I'll okay. let the brothers they'll, they'll show it on your. Okay. On your. Mashallah, mashallah, barak. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> barak Allah fiq. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Okay, can I ask you Yeah, let the cameras come so we can so they can benefit from the questions as well, inshallah. Oh, I, I love you. Barakallah feek. May Allah love you as you love me for his sake. Inshallah. Oh, Yusuf, you can? Yeah, you can show us live. Okay. Where is the two sheikhs I watch the most? I mean, I like I want to learn from the most is you and like Sheikh Asma, like you know, right? Mashallah, we'll send him a message. Inshallah, I'm sure he'll you know him? see. It. Uh, I I know of him. We we know each other. Uh, Yusuf met with him. Inshallah, we know him to be very good. Mashallah. So maybe you can take the iPad off the fan and just hold it. Inshallah, we're gonna walk a little bit. It's a beautiful day here in Rosarito. Yes, I think. Huh? So. Yusuf. Wait, yeah. Uh, I have a question. It's not really about Islam, but well, it is. Ask about away. It's Islam. okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, what ethnicity have you seen become Muslim the most? Like, where you live? I mean. That's a good question. Percentage-wise, not like number-wise. Yeah. yeah. Percentage -wise. yeah. I mean, I think Mexican. I'll give you a, I'll give you a good, quick breakdown. I'm, let me just wait for Yusuf to come. Yusuf. Yeah. Yeah. Yusuf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead, ask your question. Okay. Oh, well, question number five is, what is uh, evil eye? I mean, wait, 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 ethnicity, which is becoming most Muslims first, right? Oh, yeah. All right. So what I saw, and Allah knows best, is not a scientific uh, study of statistics, but in the earlier times, for example, in the 
60s and 70s and 80s, mostly what we saw was a lot of African-American brothers becoming Muslim. Um, all the way into the 90s. Um, in the 90s, we saw a lot of Latinos, people of Hispanic background starting to become Muslim. Um, after 2011, um, and I was active in the Muslim community at that time. Ah, subhanAllah. Beautiful. Yes, you can pet dogs if they're wet. You can wash your hands later, but... This is your dog? Ah. What kind of, is he a husky? Yeah, beautiful. MashaAllah. Creation of Allah. Uh, so, there, after 2001, we saw a huge influx of American, like white Americans, Caucasians becoming Muslim because they started to read about what is Islam and so on. Then, in the 2000, past 2010, we saw a huge number of Latinos coming to Islam. Right now, I would say at least 50% of the Shahadas we're seeing are Latinos. You know, they're seeing people everywhere from El Salvador, from Guatemala, mostly Mexico. Um, a lot of people, alhamdulillah, becoming Muslim. You still have, alhamdulillah, good amount of African Americans, whites, Caucasians becoming Muslim. Um, at least what we see in San Diego, uh, the vast, I mean, the biggest group that we're seeing right now is Latinos, alhamdulillah. And we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues the, the, the Latino culture, whether it's in Mexico or down further. Uh, there's a lot of things that Islamic values that are already there, you know, yeah, family yeah. values, you know, uh, you know the... Oh, man, this is a good dog, man. The hukum for touching a dog is jayis to touch a dog. If a wetness of a dog gets on you, you have to wash it. I'll wash my hands, relax, you know. <laughs> but in the Sharia, in the Sharia, and he, there are some different so opinions. The stronger opinion is the dog in itself is not najis. kalb. The saliva of the kalb is najis. Now that I touched him, but because it's been raining and he's wet, I'm going to wash my hands seven times, the first of them with either earth or soap. But again, it doesn't mean that we don't show love to dogs. Logs are a creation of Allah. As Muslims, we don't hate dogs. We don't hate pigs. We don't hate any of the creation of Allah, right? Uh, you know, we love animals. They're, they're a creation of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told about Ashab al-Kahf and their dog in the Quran, right? And praised the dog of Ashab al-Kahf for the standing guard and so on. And the point there being, uh, some Muslims have this, oh my God, it's a dog. You know, no, the dogs are great. Sahaba had dogs, they used to hunt with them. If you keep a dog for a shari reason, for example, hunting or uh, guarding or shepherding or uh, using for things that, that the sharia gives us reason. Many of the ulema have said even seeing eye, like if you need a, a dog because of disabilities, keeping those reasons is permissible. It does not decrease your reward when you have a sharia reason for it. Keeping dogs without reason, you know, keeping a dog, some people keep a pit bull in their house and you know, there's no reason and then, you know, things happen and sometimes, quite often, the pit bull will bite. Not just pit bulls, pit bulls are great dogs, it's how you treat dogs. Uh, but a dog might turn on their owner and so off because of mistreatment. So putting that without necessity, the Sharia forbids. So yes, for that, you will lose one qirat of reward in the house if you keep one without a reason. And that's not permissible. But again, if you hunt, or if you have it for guarding, or if you have it for shepherding, or if you have it for other needs like seeing eye dogs and so on, in the Sharia, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no sin on you. Your reward is not decreased. If you touch a dog, and wetness from a dog, whether it's from the mouth or the nose, or if, if the dog is wet, gets on you, you wash it seven times, the first of them with earth. But we love dogs, we love cats, we love all of the creation of Allah. This is something that Allah created, and uh, inshallah, we hope that Allah uh, blesses all of us to be upon those that love the creation of Allah. Our God never order us to go and alive dogs and camels and all that. And, and what? And do what? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you look at the biblical scripture of, you know, if you look at Amulek and killing donkeys and sheep, we don't do that kind of a thing, alhamdulillah. What about uh, guide dogs? Guide dogs are permissible when out of necessity. And this is what we call the rura in the sharia. Ah. Um, recently, ulema have written on this issue where guide dogs for seeing eye, uh, like blind people and stuff, due to the necessity of having them, are permissible. When you mean wash seven times, hmm. you mean just wash 
seven times or like seven sections of doing no, 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 no. So, so like for example, I'm gonna walk, I'll do it in front of everybody so people can learn. We can take some earth, dirt, rub it, and then wash it once, it's gone, and wash it a second time, stop, third time, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. Okay. Right? Even if it's all gone, but by, by you finish the seven, because it's ibadah, this is a worship, right? Najasat, and I don't want to go into big fiqh dars here, but there's three types. Mukhaffafa, Mutawassita, and Mughallada. And we have fiqh durus on our masjid, you can look at them in details. Mukhaffafa, for example, al bowl or the urine of the baby boy that doesn't eat solids yet, or uh, madi, which is a clear liquid that is pre seminal fluid. That one you can do nadh or wash. You just sprinkle water on it. Mutawassita, the middle level najasa, you have to wash. Going to different opinions of ulama, but Ibn Qudama, for example, he says three times, right? So human urine, even if it goes off, if the ain on najasa, if the najasa is still on, then you have to wash it until it's gone. But if you wash it in the urine, for example, you know, uh, uh, a young boy's urine gets on your clothes, or your own urine gets on your clothes, and you wash it once and the urine's gone, like okay, that's one. You have to wash it two more times because it's ibadah, right? And the two mughallada, according to Hanabila, is the saliva or walaga of pigs and dogs. Those two, the saliva, the wetness of a pig or dog, if it gets on you, then you have to wash seven times. The first of them being with earth, or as ulama have said, that today if you use soap in its place, it's permissible because dirt was the cleansing agent in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was more fiqhi than I expected to get onto today. Somebody asked, can you explain back dogs? I think they mean black dogs. Uh, Dogs are all creatures of Allah, we love all of them. The fully black dog, when there is no white on it, it's completely black, is susceptible to jinn. And that's why in a hadith Rasulullah mentioned, the black dog, meaning completely black, is jinn. Jinn can affect animals as they can affect humans. Some are more susceptible to the effect of jinn than others. So in that sense, we need to be careful if a dog is completely black, not patched and so on. But anyway, these are things, for example, uh, in America, there was a summer of Sam where there was a man who in New York went around doing a serial killing and when he was caught, he said a complete black dog used to come and tell him who to kill. So this, this hadith we saw in practical application in our time. So we ask Allah to protect us. But again, we love dogs, we love cats, we love pigs. Pigs are a creation of Allah. Pigs are safe around us. We don't want to eat them. You know? <laughs> but again, every creature has its own place. A dog's place is not for you to put a little bow tie on and sleep with. A dog's place is to guard your house or guard your field or to help you hunt or help you see and get around. If you use the creation of Allah for where they're used, you're good. But when people take a ferocious wolf dog and try to play with them as if it's a toy and then when he bites them and then they have him killed, then because it's the human's fault, you're not using the creation of Allah in the right place. So if you have a dog for guarding, for shepherding, for hunting, for other reasons that are, are approved in the Sharia, nothing wrong with it. But don't take a dog and try to make him into like a little pet of yours, a little doll. You know, people take, they, you know, the small dogs are all bred to be small. That's not, they, they started out like this, looking like wolves, you know. And then now you, you guys have people that make little dogs and put little bow ties and sleep with them and they just yap away. And then they, you know, even when you play fight with a dog, you're not supposed to play fight. And if you do, you're supposed to win. Why? Because this is from the psyche of the dog that if you lose, then he thinks he's the alpha, right? So, but people don't realize that. They start play fighting with their little dog and they start winning. And then when the dog gets aggressive, then they have him put to sleep or killed, or, you know, which is wrong. In Islam, we put the dog in its place. We put it in its, it, for its purpose. And that's why it's harmony. Uh, and to be clear, because we're getting a lot of people saying in the comments, uh, Saliva does not invalidate the wudu, right? Dog saliva does not invalidate Good question. If a dog licks you, it does not invalidate your wudu. It is from the, it is not from the nawaqid al wudu. It does not affect your fasting. It is najis. If you have saliva of dog on you, you can't go make salah with it. But it does not mean that your wudu is invalidated. It does not mean that your fast is invalidated. It does not have any effect on those. But if you're making salah and a dog licks you, your salah is invalidated because one of the shurut of salah is that the makan, the place, and your badan and your body is free from najasat, right? But the things that invalidate wudu, dog saliva is not one of them. Is this pre-recorded? No. 
This is a pre-recording. I am a robot. No, it's not pre-recording. This is live. That's the whole point. Why does it say live if you think it's pre-recorded, brothers? Come on, right? And black cats are totally fine. Black cats are fine. We don't have any superstitions about black cats. Cats are fine in general. Is that a black cat? Yeah. Oh, there you go. This is pre-recorded. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not. Uh, but no, we don't have any of that black cats being witches and, and all that kind of nonsense or a black cat crosses your path. We don't believe in omens. Yes, yeah? Tips for da'wah. Tips for da'wah. Yeah. Stick to the Quran and Sunnah. Stick to the way of the Salaf al-Ummah. Stick to not compromising. Never uh, giving in to societal pressures. Not getting distracted with people. Focusing on Tawheed. You know, there's a lot more to it. Inshallah, if you're from Canada, I'm going to be up there in a few days uh, with the brothers from TIC. We're going to have a da'wah training and, and a da'wah conversation. So you can join us there if you're in Toronto at TIC April 7th. We'll talk about it more in detail. But I promised our brother Ibrahim to get through his questions. So let's get to those before Adhan time. How much time do we have about? We have 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay, inshallah. Okay, so uh, evil eye. Um the Quran doesn't mention literally like the word evil and then I. It says envy, right? Hasad. Yeah. The Quran talks about hasad. And what, like, what is it? Is that like, um, like if I, envy I got you. Someone is that like a jinn does it, or is it like my soul? No, no, no. I, I'll explain it. So the ain or the evil eye, and I know some of the du'as out there nowadays are doubting these things because of the weakness of their iman or lack of their knowledge. The Quran doesn't need to spell out every detail. The Quran tells you what hasad and the bad effects of hasad in Surah Al-Falaq, that's there. So when the Qur'an gives you that, everything is in the Qur'an. Everything, including about the Ain. Surah Al-Falaq tells you about the evil effects of hasad. Now, how does hasad affect? Now we have hadith to give that detail, right? The Qur'an is a relatively small book with guidance till the Day of Judgment, right? 114 surahs, 13, 30 juz. So it has everything in it. But it's not going to give you every detail for how to make salah, how, how to fold your hands, how to, how to get up from ruku. Like those things are not going to be in the Quran. That we learn from the sunnah. The hukam is in the Quran. Everything is in the Quran. The tafsil, the hikmah that's with it is the sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ in Sahih Ahadith in Al-Bukhari told us there is a ayn and ayn has effect. So anybody from our brothers, whether your name might be Khan something, but if you're starting to doubt these things, may Allah increase your iman and bring you back. Do not become from the people that reject hadith. The authentic sahih ahadith have to be accepted. And ayn is mentioned in tawatar. In many ahadith, tawatar ma'inawi, in meaning. So we have no doubt to it. But how does it work? It doesn't mean that you're shooting some kind of lasers out of your eyes. No. But things have an effect. When you look at something and you don't wish barakah for it, there is an evil effect that comes out of it, a hasad. And it could be subconsciously, it could be unintentionally. You could look at a brother and like myself, say barakallah. barakallah. All right, good, because I don't want well, you to give me ayn. That's both, both are good, right? Right? So, now, if you look at a good looking brother or a, or a woman looks at a sister or whatever, and they look at him, they say, oh, he's so good looking, or he's so beautiful, or she's so beautiful, or that car is so nice. There is an envy in the heart and that has a spiritual effect that comes out that's called the Ain. But that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu told us instead of that, instead of just being like, oh my God, you're so handsome or oh my God, you're so beautiful. Oh my God, the car's wrong. You can say Barakallah or Allahumma Barak or Barakallah Laka or Laki or Alaykum. You say Barakah, you ask Allah to put Barakah. Now you are putting the, the, the dua, the supplication, that evil hasad is gone, the ayn does not affect. Right? That's why we say barakallah. Even if you look in the Quran about the sahib al jannatain you know, the, about the, the people of the two gardens, one of them that was boasting about himself and how he was destroyed, when the other one told him that, Id qulta, if you had said, ma sha Allah, la quwata illa billah. Huh? If you had said that, ma sha Allah, whatever Allah wills, and there is no except with Allah, not hawla wala quwwat, that's a regular dua when the Quran is mentioned without hawl. So this shows you that if you had, instead of being so, you know, envious even of your own things, if you had ascribed that to Allah and the greatness of Allah, it would save you from that evil effect. So for your own things, if you get amazed, like let's say you make a, a, some pasta and it's really amazing, 
And instead of just being like, wow, that's amazing, you can say, MashaAllah, la quwata illa billah. Right? For other people, you say, Barakallah. You see somebody dressed well, you say, Barakallah. Allahumma barik. You say, you say it that way, put, put Yusuf in the shot so you can, they can see what I'm talking about, right? Somebody's got that look going. You say, everybody, say, say, say Barakallah. Don't give him aim, man, here. I'm going I'm to show you, bro. There you go, bro. There you go, man. <laughs> Just for that, now I'm going to have to show Mujahid in here, man. <laughs> Barakallah. <laughs> All right. Barakallah. Yeah, 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 flex it, flex. Show, show, show him. Show him. No, 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 you got to flex him. Everybody say Allahumma Barak. Don't give the brother Ain, though. Brother, I have so many questions. Go ahead. Hit me with more. Go ahead. Hit away. Secondary Habibi. I, I don't know him. I just oh, saw him. Oh, yeah. So, um, so there's a hadith. I don't remember exactly, but it says, like, if you hear a dog barking, um, it sees a jinn. But it, does it actually mean howling or does it mean barking? No, no. So dogs bark for different reasons. Yeah. Donkeys bray for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But from them like is at like times they see what we don't see. Yeah. And at times a dog will bark at something and there's nothing there. Yeah. And at times because there is an effect of jinn. Sometimes a dog is barking at a person. That doesn't mean every time. Sometimes any roosters crowing or, or, or donkeys braying will have something in the background that we may not realize. So we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those things. We don't assume that every time, but when we do hear certain things, especially when there is no reason for it, and we realize that we share a, a space with jinn in the sense that there are jinn around. Now we are forbidden as Muslims, as humans, to be interfering in the world of jinn. We got, you know, we don't, we shouldn't be trying to talk to them, shouldn't be trying to capture them or anything. You mind your business. And it's haram on the jinn to interfere in our dunya. They mind their business in their world, Without right? The we keep it that way. To prolong it to let's go. 10, 7 minutes. Khalas, if it's adhan, let's go give the adhan, inshallah. We wait like a two minutes. It's okay, two minutes, wait. If the adhan is in, we should give the adhan because people have to break the fast. Yeah. When the adhan comes in, yeah. the sunnah is to break the fast right away. I think for our life, we're going to end now because uh, alhamdulillah, it's time to make iftar. We're going to go eat. So our lives will end. Brother Parvez will uh, will go live on his, inshallah. So and uh, no, we'll, we'll go with you on your one, inshallah. So our our one will end it, inshallah. Hmm. We'll end it. How do we end? I got you. Okay, inshallah. Finish the live? Finish the live, inshallah. Jazakumullah. <laughs>